Hey everybody, this is Jams and I'm back with another video. Uh, had a request from somebody that I show off my Nintendo 64 collection. Uh, I wanted to do this using a better camera than my web camera, but I'm still trying to get that sorted right now. It's going to be difficult to get a proper adapter to insert my microphone for that right now with the virus being what it is. Uh, but with the virus being what it is, and given that my last video was such a was a pretty decent hit for this channel, if I'm going to be honest, I'm uh, just going to wing it with the webcam again, and I'll see how this goes. Uh, I've got my N64 games right here. Uh, I keep them all in this bag. It's probably not the best thing for them, but it's about all I've got right now. Uh, now my Nintendo 64 collection is pretty decent in addition to the uh, system itself. I've got three controllers, a controller pack, and I put the expansion pack in several years ago. And I would just keep collecting games that I want to collect for it, uh, simply put. And I think I've got all the ones that I have here. Let me just double check over there see. Yep, okay. So I'm just going to reach into my bag and we're just going to go through all of these and I'll tell you what I think of some of them. Now, some of them I haven't played. In fact, some of them are still in the wrappings, but this is my Nintendo 64 collection, and I hope you enjoy it. So we're just going to reach in here, and we're going to pull one out. Let's see what it is. Uh, first one here that I have is uh, Aiden Chronicles, the first mage on the Nintendo 64. This right here is an RPG for the N64, one of a handful it's pretty good, I thought, anyway. I mean, it's it's no Final Fantasy IX or anything like that, but I still enjoyed it. Uh, Storyline's pretty good. Uh, music can be grating, and uh, the use of the expansion pack actually made it worse graphically. Not a powerhouse for the system, but a fairly decent game nonetheless, I thought. Definitely on my B team, uh, definitely on my B roll with N64 games on there. Let's see what we have here. Uh, F-Zero X, F-Zero X uh, for the uh, Nintendo 64 now. F-Zero X is a sequel to F-Zero, obviously. It's one of the few Nintendo 64 games that got a true 60 frames per second. Therefore, the graphics aren't exactly the best, but the sense of speed that you get with this game is incredible. It is second to none would recommend this game to anybody that enjoys a racer that is blisteringly fast and also extraordinarily difficult. It's not as hard as the GameCube one, but it's it's pretty close. Uh, pretty underrated game, I think. Uh, would recommend picking this one up, especially if you can find it for cheap. Next one we have here is Killer Instinct Gold. Now this one is the Nintendo 64 port of Killer Instinct 2 from the arcades. Uh, Killer Instinct 1 being one of the premier fighters for the Super Nintendo. This is a sequel. A lot of people don't like this one, believe it or not, but I don't know. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, it's got my favorite character in the entire Killer Instinct franchise, Tusk, making his debut here. And it's just a really fun game. Blisteringly brutal uh, combos and gore and blood and some shocking amount of blood for a T-rated game, I think. Uh, definitely completely wacky uh, one thing that I do advise though is that if you have the rumble pack like I do take it out or the game won't start uh, just throwing that out there next one we have here is Mega Man 64 now Mega Man 64 is actually a sequel to Mega Man Le is actually the N64 version of Mega Man Legends for the original PlayStation and it comes with all the trappings of that game uh, just with the N64 controller I don't really have a preference over one controller or the other it's just missing one room from Mega Man Legends, but otherwise it's pretty much the same game. Can't go wrong either way, it's a classic. As long as you don't mind the frankly antiquated control scheme, because it was already antiquated by the time this game hit the N64 compared to the uh, PlayStation 1, and the review scores of the time reflect that, but the game itself is, is still pretty good. Uh, let's see what else we got in here. Uh, ah, here, here's the big one. Mario Kart 64. 
Mario Kart 64 is my favorite Mario Kart game, bar none, and that's purely nostalgia talking, because uh, I do think Double Dash is actually probably a superior game. I think, I think, you know, just reach over my shelf here, I think Mario Kart 8 is probably a technically superior game as well, but this one, the battle mode alone, is worth the price of admission, in my opinion. The music is incredible. Classic tracks, classic action, just all around the definitive kart racer. It set the bar, in my opinion, and in some ways I don't think it's ever been topped in regards to that, but that's, in, that's Super Mario 64. Uh, another thing about it, though, and I find it interesting, is this game sells for about 40 to $50 usually on the internet at the time of this recording. It's not because it's a rare game, it's just that popular. People want to play this that badly. So, would recommend it to anybody. Especially if you can find it for under 30 like I did. But that was several years ago now, understand? Now, let's see what we have here. Ah, Banjo-Kazooie. Banjo-Kazooie. What can you say about Banjo-Kazooie? It's a classic collectathon. Now, keep in mind that this sticker here, this came with my system. So I never really saw the need to get a different cartridge, especially because, you know, it was free. Uh, I usually try to buy N64 games with better stickers than this, but it was the gold shines through. It's classic rare wear, classic collectathon, surprisingly difficult final boss, too. But it's a wonderful game. You can't really go wrong with it. One of the best games to come out in 1998. And that is saying something, because 1998 was probably the best year ever for video games, in my opinion. And I might make a video, a whole video about that later. But uh, next one we have here is Nightmare Creatures for the Nintendo 64. Now, Nightmare Creatures is a 3D beat-em-up type game published by Activision. This one also was on the PlayStation. Uh, I've played both versions. I actually prefer the N64's slightly better graphics. Now, the PS1 has more FMV cutscenes, and, you know, some people could argue that the blocky textures and everything like that actually added to the gothic atmosphere of this game, but I don't know. I prefer the cleaner edge of the N64 in this version. In, with this version. Uh, can't get really go wrong with either one. It's mindless action it's mindless action beat em up goodness set in Victorian London. Uh, would recommend it. Aesthetically, it's very similar to Bloodborne. Uh, so if you like Bloodborne, you'll probably like this game. Let's move that to the side here a little bit because we're starting to fill up. And we got so many more to cover here. Uh, next one we have here is Jet Force Gemini. From what I understand, because I haven't really fully played this one yet, uh, this is rare at their most rare. This game is a huge collectathon, three playable characters, and you need to find everything to beat the game. This this game was handed off to one of the this game was handed off to one of the uh, B teams within Rare, and it, it from what I understand it shows, but at the same time it's also extraordinarily ambitious. I'm actually looking really for I'm actually really looking forward to playing this one. Uh, probably going to play it over the summer because if this quarantine lasts as long as I think it's going to, what else am I going to do? <laughs> but uh, that is Jet Force Gemini. I'm going to see what else we have. Uh, Yoshi's Story. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't really like Yoshi's Story. Uh, I think it's too easy. It's too simplistic. The music is annoying. Overall, just... A complete and total letdown compared to what Yoshi's Island was. If you can find it for cheap, go for it. Otherwise, I'd say skip it, if I'm going to be honest here. I, It came with my system. I didn't pay for it. But, you know, Yoshi's Story has its fans, and I'm not one of them. There is one good track in this. There is one good track in this, and it's very rappy, and... You'll know exactly what I'm talking about when you finally do get to playing this game, if you do decide to play it. But as I said, I wouldn't bother. But that was Yoshi. That's Yoshi's story. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Let me just reach into this bag. Ah, Goldeneye. Now, what can you say about Goldeneye other than it's a classic? 
odd job is broken as heck. Uh, surprisingly meaty campaign with Goldeneye. Uh, very entertaining multiplayer still, in my opinion. It ha hasn't aged, yes. Is it still fun when you get past all of that? Yes. Uh, would still recommend this one to anybody, especially if you have any burgeoning interest in the first-person shooter genre, because without this game, uh, games like Halo 3 over here might not be... might not have happened, essentially, if it wasn't for GoldenEye able... if GoldenEye wasn't able to popularize the first-person shooter on home consoles. Um, would recommend GoldenEye still to this day, especially as a piece of history. Now, let's see... I'm gonna reach into the bag here... Ah! Turok 2! Uh, Seeds of Evil. Uh, another Nintendo 64 uh, first-person shooter. Uh, you see I paid $9 for it. Uh, it's about what it's worth... around what it's worth now, I think. Last time I checked the prices, at least. Uh, very convoluted, very difficult shooter, not because the combat is hard, but because it's very difficult to find where you're going, essentially. It's definitely a guide game, I'd say, if you aren't really into hunting around for stuff. Uh, would actually not recommend playing this on Nintendo 64, though. Uh, they recently re-released this on the PC, and I say recently, it was like last year, but... Uh, that one's got mouse and keyboard look and everything like that and and hints if you get stuck. Plus you don't have to have a Nintendo 64 memory card like you do with the N64 version to save. So there's that. Uh, is it worth playing? Yes. But I wouldn't recommend playing it on Nintendo 64. Would recommend playing it on PC, however. Uh, next one we have here is Perfect Dark. Now, in my opinion, this game right here is better than GoldenEye. Uh, there's stuff in this game that hasn't really been attempted since this game, as far as co-op goes, as far as multiplayer goes. Uh, I mean, I can't think of a single other game where you can actually control one of the bad guys in co-op, at least as far as a first-person shooter goes, that's popular. And the multiplayer holds up. Had lots of fun times with this one. Uh, you do need the expansion pack to play this one. Uh, for the campaign, you need the expansion pack. Now, it's worth the expan It's worth getting an expansion pack to play this game, in my opinion. Uh, one of the best first-person shooters of all time. If you don't want to play it on Nintendo 64 because of the frame rate, because the frame rate does chug in certain places, uh, the Xbox 360 has a re-release of it, as well as the Rare re Replay on the Xbox One. Uh, you might want to check that version out because uh, because of the frame rate, like I said, but if you can't, and if you can't, if you don't have an Xbox 360 or an Xbox One, this is still a good game. So, when that actually leads me into my next one here, Speaking of expansion pack games that require the expansion pack, this is uh, Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. This is a game that I think needs no introduction. Now, I go back and forth on this one quite a bit as to what I think of it. Uh, I don't think it's as good as Ocarina of Time, but that's mostly because I don't like time limits in my games. The one game that is that I've been able to enjoy with that is uh, Fallout 1. But that's just because the time limit was so generous that it might as well not have even have been there. Now, Majora's Mask is a fantastic game. I think it's one of the better Zelda games. My problem is, again, it's the time limit. And it might be because I played the Nintendo 64 version. From what I understand, the uh, 3DS version fixes a lot of the issues I had with this game. Now, it's a fantastic game. I think sometimes the fanboys overhype it a little bit too much. And as a result of it being overrated, it is now slightly... I mean, for it being slightly... For it being underrated, I now think it's slightly overrated. But I would still overall give it a recommendation. Uh, I don't know if it's worth the $50 the cart is going for, especially since Majora's Mask on 3DS is like 20 bucks now. Uh, can't go wrong either way. Would recommend. Now, the last one here 
this is another game that needed the expansion pack and it's not because the uh, game actually it's not because the game's graphics required it or anything like that there was a game breaking bug that could only be worked around with the expansion pack and that's Donkey Kong Country 64 now uh, Donkey Kong 64 I guess I should say now this as a sequel to Donkey Kong Country as a trilogy I don't think holds up is it a bad game though no I think it's a really good game I never finished it because this is another one where you gotta collect almost everything or everything to beat the game. But uh, I still might go back and do that. I think it's, I still think it's a fantastic game, and I don't know any other N64 games that are in yellow. If you know any of any, let me know in the comments. I'll be sure to hunt them down. Uh, but that's Donkey Kong 64. Uh, would recommend again, especially if you got the time for it. Uh, next one I have here is uh, Star Wars Rogue Squadron. Now, Star Wars Rogue Squadron is a really fun little game for the Nintendo 64. It's a, kind of a shooter, space flight kind of game, very arcadey, especially compared to something like TIE Fighter, which that is a space sim. You know, this is more of a romp. And it was definitely the inspiration for the space battles in Star Wars Battlefront 2. And I say Star Wars Battlefront. When I say Star Wars Battlefront Two, I mean the one from two thousand and five. I don't mean that god awful crap that EA put out in twenty fifteen or whenever the heck it came out. I don't care. I saw one look of it and I said no, especially those microtransactions. But this game is a lot of fun, but it's very brutal, especially if you're not familiar with the controls. Would still recommend playing it, however. But that was that was Rogue Squadron. So we'll just put that down there and try not to let the stack fall. Now the next one I have here, this is Pokemon Stadium. I know it doesn't look like Pokemon Stadium, but it is Pokemon Stadium. When I, I didn't know what it was when I got it because the uh, sticker was missing when I got it. So when I found out it was Pokemon Stadium, I wrote Pokemon Stadium in Sharpie. But the problem with it is if you look at ran a little bit so it says Pokemon Stadium seems legit am I right but it is Pokemon Stadium I promise now this game is a lot of fun even if you just have rental Pokemon it's fun to see the kind of craziness you can get into with that and the mini games here alone are worth it in my opinion very nostalgic game for me I don't know if it holds up especially if you know you're from the DS generation of Pokemon games but I I think it's a fun game Now, let's see what else we have here. Ah, well, I've got to know, let me just see what else we have here. Uh, just a moment there, okay. I, I had to fish around a little bit be for this one because it leads into my segue for, it leads into a segue. Uh, next one I have here is WCW versus NWO World Tour. Now, this was one of the first, if not the first professional wrestling games on the Nintendo 64. And this game was a lot of fun, had pretty much all the WCW guys that you could have wanted, NWO guys as well, and some characters that were from New Japan that were like swapped around because nobody knew who these New Japan guys were, at least in the 90s, unless you were a serious wrestling fan, you wouldn't know who they were. This was a fun game for its time. Wouldn't recommend picking it up now though, because this game exists and it came out the very next year and WCW versus NWO Revenge. This game had all the things that WCW versus NWO World Tour did and then some. Uh, this game is amazing. Got a very pick up and play nature, lots of fun, decent character creator, Bret Hart's in it, so that's a big deal for me. Uh, I was really sad when WCW you know, bit the big one in the Monday Night Wars. I stopped watching wrestling for a while, even though I watched WWF at the time as well. I'm back into it now, thanks to AEW and certain wrestlers on WWE I really enjoy still. Uh, but WCW was my, was my promotion, and I was really sad to see him go, even if the last couple of years were kind of shit. Uh, but this game is not that. It's a fantastic little brawler, fantastic fighting game awesome multiplayer would recommend to anybody that's just looking for a good old 
time with their Nintendo 64. Now, let's see what else we have here. Ah, Castlevania 64. This game, in my opinion, is extraordinarily underrated. It gets a bad rap in the internet circles. I don't think it deserves it because the storyline in here is phenomenal. The music is phenomenal. The, the controls, I'll admit, aren't as good as some of the other Castlevania games. But once you get used to them, you can fly. And it's got two different characters and two... and you know, different routes and things of that nature. Multiple endings for each character as well. Lots of replay value here. This is another one that you need the controller pack for uh, to save, uh, but that's okay. This is a fantastic game. Not sure if I'd recommend this version of it though, because there was another version out that came out called Legacy of Darkness the very next, the very same year that added two more playable characters. And it's pretty much a director's cut version of this game. However, I'm a cheap guy and uh, that version sells for way more than this one does. So either way, I get. I guess what I'm saying is either way, uh, this is a good game, and I would recommend anybody to play it. Let's see what else we have here. Shadow Man on the Nintendo 64. This is one part uh, Zelda, one part Tomb Raider, essentially, with a very 90s comic book era storyline involving serial killers and the occult. Uh, it's a very underrated game, one of the darker, more brutal games on the on the system, in my opinion. Uh, would recommend to anybody. Uh, N64 version is actually a pretty decent version of this game because this game came out on multiple systems. Uh, the Dreamcast version is the best version of its contemporaries, in my opinion. So if you have a Dreamcast, get that version over the N64 version. Just stay away from the uh, PlayStation version because it's bad comparatively. Uh, the PC version is also good, though you might want to hold off on any versions of this game however because this game recently got an announcement uh the night dive studios is actually remastering this game for the pc and updating it and everything like that so you might want to wait for that version because it's coming out in 2021 uh, but this is a pretty good game even though i never did finish it because it was so long now let's see what else we have here okay Star Wars Episode One Pod Racer. This game is nostalgic as heck, and it also got recently released on the Switch. So I don't know if you want the N64 version, but it's a lot of fun. And Watto talks to you in this game, so how could you go wrong? Fantastic racing game, great multiplayer. Would recommend playing this one. It's a little on the easy side, but hey, you know what? It's a Star Wars game. It's pod racing. It's it's great. It might even be better than the movie. Anyway. Let's see what else we have here. Ah, WWF No Mercy. WWF No Mercy is probably the best wrestling game of all time. It still sells for peanuts as well. This game was made by the same guys that made those two WCW games I showed you. And this was their peak. Uh, this was their peak as far as this console goes. And it was probably... It's still probably the best uh, Nintendo 64 it's probably still the best wrestling game of all time, as I said. I have played WWE SmackDown, uh, SmackDown Here Comes the Pain. I still think this one's better, though. Uh, robust character creator, branching storylines, a uh, ton of selectable characters, fun controls, just everything you could possibly want. And it added, and it added new modes and everything like that as well. Like, you could play for hours with a ladder match in this game would recommend this game even if you don't like wrestling that's how good of a game this is so that was wwf no mercy uh, let's see here goodness i have we're, we have so many more to go still okay ogre battle 64 on the nintendo 64 ogre battle 64 is another rpg for the n64 and in my opinion, this might be the best one of the lot. And it's even better than it's even better than most of the PS1 RPGs from the time as well. It's from the same it's from many of the same guys that made Final Fantasy Tactics made this game as well. Multiple ways to play through it, a morality system, uh, lots of character customization, 
excellent storyline involved excellent storyline with a lot of uh political intrigue and you know occult characters and the, the one thing about it though is that it, you also you one interesting thing about it it does have saves on the cartridge but you can also use the controller pack to back up your saves which is a good thing because this is an exceedingly long game i still haven't finished it i'm going to though i swear i'm going to because this game is awesome and would recommend to anybody that likes strategy games, especially if you're the fan, if you're a fan of Shining Force, Final Fantasy Tactics, or Fire Emblem, or if you like March of the Black Queen on the Super Nintendo, this game is good. Uh, not sure if it's worth the seventy or so dollars it goes for on you know Amazon or whatever right now, but you know if you can pick it up, if you can find it cheap, would recommend it on N64. If you can't, it's on the Wii U Virtual Console as well. It might come to Switch later. I don't know. Uh, but this has had multiple re-releases, so fantastic game. Uh, definitely worth your time if you can find it out in the wild. I mean, it's made by Atlas. How could you go wrong? Now, the next one here is peak Nintendo 64 nostalgia here. Star Fox 64. This game is amazing. One of the best rail shooters of all time. Multiple ways to play through this one again multiple ways of going through it with the with the, even within those paths uh classic storyline probably the most quotable game of all time so much so that it inspired google to uh, go type up do a barrel roll in google search and you'll see what i mean uh just incredible soundtrack fully voice acted as well which is a rarity on this system uh but yeah Star Fox 64 one of the best games on the console Next one we have here is Blast Core. Blast Core is another rareware game. Came out before GoldenEye. One of the first games they made for the system. This was actually a budget title. Essentially, you have to stop a nuke from detonating in the city, and you have to stop it by any means necessary. And you get robots, you get dump trucks, you get fire trucks, you get monster trucks. It's, there's, there's a lot of ways to play through this. A lot of variety it can get very challenging especially in the later stages but it's definitely worth your time but that that would be blast core would recommend let's see what else we have here now this is hexen hexen is a classic uh, first person shooter uh, that was made with the doom engine it was one of the last games to have used the doom engine as well would recommend but not on Nintendo 64. Uh, would recommend on PC, uh, especially with GZ Doom installed or something like that, uh, because the N64's uh, controller is clunky for this kind of game, and it uses their controller pack in, in way, and it uses a controller pack to save, and definitely has limited space for that as well. Uh, would actually recommend this on the PC. It also got versions on the Saturn and the PS1, but they're not as good as the N64 version. So if you absolutely need to play it on a contemporary console, uh, Hexen on N64 is the way to go. Otherwise, just ignore it and play it on PC. This was what this was given to me by a friend, by the way. I didn't pay for it or anything like that. So that's Hexen. Just put that over there. Now this one I had. Now this one I have in the wrapping still, but it's Bomber. I have played this one before. Uh, it's uh, Bomberman 64. Bomberman 64 has an amazing multiplayer mode and a very solid single player game to go with it. Very difficult single player game if you're trying to 100% it though. So I don't rarely recommend doing that. Just breeze through it, enjoy yourself, play the multiplayer afterwards. The sequels are also bomb. Are also awesome. Uh, so Bomberman 64 gets a recommendation from me. Now let's see what else we have here. Wave Race 64. Wave Race 64 is essentially a jet ski game. And I normally don't go for games like this, but it was $4 at the local retro store. And I was shocked at how good it was graphics still hold up the backgrounds are beautiful the music is beautiful the water physics are still incredible in this game i really feel the waves in it this is definitely when i think of summer 
not only do I think of N64, I also think of Wave Race 60, Wave Race 64. It's an amazing game. Uh, definitely well worth your time. Well worth your time, especially for like racing games. Very challenging uh, on the higher difficulties as well. So if you like a good challenge, uh, Wave Race 64 is the way to go. Now we're getting down to it. Not many more to go. Super Mario 64, game that needs no introduction. Super Mario 64 revolutionized 3D gaming as a whole. It's definitive, it's iconic. If you haven't played this one, you better go out and play it right now. I don't know if I'd recommend it on N64, however, you could get it on other consoles. Uh, it got re-releases on the Wii U and the Wii, and there's also a fantastic DS port. So no matter how you play it, get this game. It's good. Body Harvest. Body Harvest was a DMA-designed game. Uh, DMA Design went on to become Rockstar North, who would create the Grand Theft Auto series. And this is sort of a prototype GTA, if I'm going to be honest, with all the vehicles you can jack into. You're trying to stop an alien invasion from wiping out humanity in the future, so you're hopping across time, killing giant bug monsters. It's very similar to Zelda in certain ways, very similar to a vehicle game and others. This game was supposed to be an N64 launch title, and it had a very rocky development history, so what we got here was kind of a hodgepodge of things, but it honestly worked out better than I thought it would. It's still a fun, fantastic game, and it goes and it sells for peanuts because nobody knows about it. Uh, would recommend giving it a shot if you ever get the time. Definitely on my B list as far as N64 games go. Ah, now here is a classic. Super Smash Brothers for the Nintendo 64. Now, this is the only Japanese uh, N64 game I have in my cattle in my uh, collection, and it pretty much plays exactly the same way that the uh, you know the NTS the uh, American version does. It just has all the Pokemon names in Japanese. Like, did you know Jigglypuff in Japan is purring? I didn't until I played this game, and it's interesting to hear all these Japanese Pokemon names in this game. But this is a very nostalgic game for me. It has been eclipsed by Melee, Brawl, and pretty much every other uh, Smash Brothers game that's come out before, or s that, that's come out since, I should say. But this is still a fantastic game. Uh, would recommend, and it, and the multiplayer still holds up. Just just so you know. It doesn't have many characters or stages, but it it's it's still a good time. Now, next one here is another rare game, Conker's Bad Fur Day. Now, this game is one of the funniest games I've ever played in my life. I've not finished it yet, if I'm going to be honest. I'm very close, uh, but it's a fantastic little game. It got re-releases on the X. It got remade on the Xbox as Conquer uh, Live and Reloaded. It's not as good as the N64 version because the uh, Live and Reloaded version actually was censored. They cut out a lot of the f bombs, uh, which is lame. So the N64 version is still the way to go, or at least it was until recently because the N64 version got ported on the Rare Replay on the Xbox One. So if you have an Xbox One, play that version. Otherwise, this is definitely worth it. I'm not sure if it's worth the $80 that it goes for right now, but if you can find it for cheaper, would recommend Conker's Bad Fur Day. It's a fun game, very funny. Especially if you like crude, Monty Python-esque potty humor like I do. Now, the next one we have on here is uh, Pokemon Snap. Pokemon Snap is one of those games that you can put a lot of time into if you are a perfectionist with your camera shots. This game is a lot of fun, very nostalgic. Uh, if you were a child of the 90s like I was, Pokemon was unavoidable, and this game came out at that time, so I spent a lot of time playing this, and I never was able to get a very good shot of Mew, I'm just gonna say it. But I did get a shot of Mew, so I consider this game beat. You can beat it in an afternoon, it's that short, but you can it's got a lot of replay value. And back in the day you could actually take your uh cartridge in and Blockbuster would 
be able to print off stickers of your shots, which was kind of neat, but good luck finding a blockbuster now. Uh, but Pokemon Snap is where it's at. Would recommend to everybody. Nintendo, please make another one. You, you're, you're sitting on this. You could make so much money if you just made another one of these. There's like a zillion Pokemon now. Imagine what that could be like. Just make it happen, okay? I will, I will buy it. The next one I have here is Mario Party. What can you say about Mario Party other than it's Mario Party? My favorite minigame on this is the one where you're all on balls and you have to knock each other off the island. That or the jump rope minigame. Both of those are a lot of fun. Uh, great game, especially if, especially after knocking back a few cold ones. Uh, definitely worth your time. Though the sequels might be better than this one on N64. I don't know. The first one is the only one I played on N64. It's got nostalgia for me, which is why I picked it up. Next one I have here is Shadowgate on the Nintendo Shadowgate 64, uh, Trials of the Four Towers. Now, this is a first-person adventure game, very similar to Myst in a certain way. Now, it's actually the third game in a, se in a series of games. First one came out on the NES, second one came out on the TurboGrafx CD, of all things. Uh, but this one follows up the storylines of those other two. It's very mysterious if you've never played the other two. It's got an atmosphere like you wouldn't believe, and the storyline's really excellent as well. I never finished it, uh, mostly because I got stuck on one puzzle or another, because this is quite a challenging game, but if you can survive in this game, you're in for it, because this game is spooky, it's atmospheric, and it is very enjoyable, very bizarre game. Not quite what I expected, but it's good nonetheless. Would recommend uh, Shadowgate 64, especially if you like puzzles. Now this one I bought and I haven't played yet. It's Hybrid Heaven on the Nintendo 64. Now Hybrid Heaven is was basically, from what I understand, Hybrid Heaven was supposedly a Konami trying to port Metal Gear Solid onto the N64 and then it became some other thing. It's a wacky RPG fighting game mix hence its name hybrid it involves a conspiracy theory involving gov it, it's a, got a conspiracy theory plot involving aliens and espionage and all that good stuff and I'm actually looking forward to playing this game because uh, I like RPGs and I like the Nintendo 64 so I don't know if it's any good you let me know in the comments if I should just sell it on down the line I don't know I'm gonna give it a shot probably but let me know if it's any good so we are down to two games here. The next one I have here is Banjo-Tooie. Now, in my opinion, this is the best platformer on the Nintendo 64. I think it's better than Banjo-Kazooie, and I think it's better than Conker. I think it's better than Donkey Kong. I think it's better than, the, than even the first Banjo-Kazooie game. Mostly because this game's got a darker tone, huge expansive worlds. You don't need to collect everything to beat the game. Uh, you get you get a reward if you do. However, uh, Kazooie can turn into a dragon. You can separate from you can separate Banjo and Kazooie. Uh, there's excellent boss fights. The music is fantastic. Grant Kirkpo Grant Kirkhope outdid himself with this one. And there is multiplayer. And the multiplayer in this game is fantastic, especially the first person shooter aspect. It's like Golden Eye. It's like uh, Perfect Dark for Kitties. I spent countless hours as a child playing that first-person shooter minigame with this. It is fantastic, and I would recommend this to everybody. Play it on the 360, play it on N64, play it on an Xbox One, just play Banjo-Tooie. And now the last game that I have on my pile here, and certainly not least, is the Pièce de Résistance, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. I can feel the weight of this game right now. This game is amazing. I think it still holds up graphically, musically, artistically, from a storytelling perspective. Everything hits on all cylinders in this game. It's a fantastic, roaring game. That rewards your exploration. Deserves your nostalgia. Everything 
that anybody's ever said and anybody that anybody else is ever going to say about Ocarina of Time is not enough. It needs to be played to understand video games and where we're at in the industry today because it is still the trend-setting game. Play it on this if you wish, but you could also play it right here on the 3DS. They're both fantastic. I prefer the N64 version just because I'm that much of a nostalgia for the graphics. I think the lighting in this one's better. And there's more blood. Uh, the version I have is also the one that had the Arabic chanting in the Fire Temple, as well as the Islamic uh, crescent moon on the mirror shield. So if you can get this version, uh, would recommend. Ganon's blood is also red in the version I have, whereas it's green in this one. You can make a whole video about the differences between versions of Ocarina of Time, if I'm going to be honest, and I might do that at some point. I don't know. But I'm sure somebody else has done it better than I could. So maybe not. But this game is the game to play on the Nintendo 64 even now. It is the game that you need to play more than just about any other Zelda game. Breath of the Wild comes close. It comes damn near close. But in my opinion, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is still the best Zelda game of all time, and it's one of my favorite video games of all time as well. And it's also one of the most historically important video games of all time. You better, if you haven't played this, what are you doing? Go play it now. But anyway, that was my Nintendo 64 collection, guys. Uh, I only collect games that I want to play for my Nintendo 64. Uh, so I want to pick up a few more. Uh, couple, the two that chiefly come to mind right now are Harvest Moon 64 and the original Paper Mario. I have played Harvest Moon 64 on emulator before, but I still would like a physical copy. And Paper Mario is another one that I would really enjoy. Uh, so that was my but uh but uh, yeah that was my N64 video my N64 collection if you want I have a lot of other video game uh systems and other things as well if this video becomes a big enough hit I might do more of those uh let me know what you think in the comments below I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you later with some more content and some more let's play footage so thank you very much for watching you guys have a fantastic night and stay safe out there don't go out unless you have to okay especially in this quarantine now i hope you all have a good night as well and thanks for watching